So, you want to achieve photorealism on your 3D renders by emulating being shot by a real camera in After Effects? Let's get it done. So I'm here in After Effects and I'll show you my workflow. So first thing is you get your render. I rendered this out as an EXR and I added extractor to extract the channels that I need. Next, I used my Open Color I.O. plugin, which gets Blender's Filmic in. And I made a video on how to get this to work because by default, it won't work with Blender's, it won't look, by default, it won't work with Blender's color file, so I have another tutorial on how to edit the code to make it work. Next, I'm gonna do some quick color correction. So let's add some color in there. Perfect, so that's the way I want it to look. Okay, so for photorealism, the first thing I'm gonna do is add depth of field. This is the plugin I use, FL Depth of Field. I'll show you how this works real quick. I have this mist pass right here. This is my mist layer, and this is rendered out of Blender. And I have that pre-composed, it has to be pre-composed. And then, turn that on. I selected that layer, my pre-composed layer, that's mist. And then I selected a point of focus, which in this case, I just fucking focus right there. And now we have depth of field. And also I crank this up to 97. By default, I think it's at like 20, which is not very much. So real cameras always have depth of field. So you definitely want to have the foreground and the background. It doesn't have to be completely out of focus, but just a little bit. This is kind of more an extreme blur, but you don't need this much. To be realistic, I would say even probably in this case, 40 looks good, maybe even 30. Even 30 looks good. You don't want everything in full focus. It just looks bad. See, it's just a very light effect. You can see, especially right here. But let's go back to where I had. I was put it like 92. Okay, so depth of field makes a big difference. Next thing is Real Smart Motion Blur. It's a third party plugin. This is also a third party plugin, FL Depth of Field. I show you in my other tutorial how to do this with native After Effects plugins. I can actually just show you that real quick. You're going to go to Camera, Can't Spell, Camera Lens Blur. You're going to select your depth layer, or in this case, a blur map. Same thing, missed. Let's jack up the blur a little bit. And you're going to play around with the blur focal distance. There you go. So that's the built-in one. I don't like it as much because I think it's not nearly as intuitive using this, having to pull it like this, especially if you're doing like focus pulls. I much prefer my third-party plugin, FL Depth of Field. So I'll turn that back on. They both look pretty good though. I then add RSMB, which is Real Smart Motion Blur. Real Smart Motion Blur. Let me actually zoom in here a little bit. See the effect is very slight. So let's see here. It's taking into account all the pixels moving and then adding motion blur to that. I'll jack it way up. So you can see, see the effect, taking into account all the motion of these pills. To have a 180 degree shutter, which is a real camera, you want it to be at 0.5, which is the default. So I just always leave it there. These aren't moving that fast. They're not gonna be super blurred out. So this is realistic. The next thing you wanna do is I'm gonna add a vignette. I'm just using CC vignette. And I just changed the amount that I wanted because most lenses have a little bit of vignetting. This is more of a, a little bit of an extreme for a more stylized look, but all lenses have a little bit of vignetting. Next, lens distortion. You can look at the edges. This is barrel distortion. I use CC lens and I changed the convergence amount for the amount I wanted because all lenses have some distortion. There's not lenses that have zero distortion. So just play with that. Wide angle lenses have more distortion than telephoto lenses. Next, I added chromatic aberration. This plugin is free. FT lens distortion. All lenses have chromatic aberration, which let me zoom in here. I have it, I'll make this extreme, I'll make it like minus 30. You always wanna make the first negative and the second one not negative. Cause if you don't, let me show you. Let's say I made this, let's just say five or something. Or actually let's do, here. Let's do zero and zero just so I can show you the effect. If you just only one, yeah, there you go. It's gonna actually change your image. So you need to make, you may see how it, you still have the pixel, the pixelation there. That's why the first one needs to be negative. So we'll do minus 41 and positive 41. And that will make it where there's no edges at all. So this adds chromatic aberration, as you can see right here. I'll make this even crazier. Actually, I'll make this like minus 70 and 70. You can really see the chromatic aberration. These pills aren't gonna have tons of chromatic aberration because they're not super sharp edges and they're also not super bright with highlights. But realistic cameras always have a little bit of chromatic aberration. The settings of minus 10 and 10 usually work good for most cases. Sometimes they go lower, sometimes they go minus five and five, but that's pretty much a good rule of thumb to always add a chromatic aberration. Next is noise. 
all images have noise. So turn that on. So this I'm using Renoiser. I'll show you how to do this with the built-in effects and After Effects in a second, but let's see. So I pretty much added modern 35 millimeter and I'll actually crank this up. Maybe, let's see, turn it on and off. You see it, take a look right there. On, off, just a little bit of grain. You can also use noise. I like Renoiser because instead of just adding grain on top, it's actually building grain with your pixels, the Red Giant plugin. If you go here, you can type in just noise. If I can spell, it helps a little bit. And add noise over there. And I'll put four, it's probably gonna be a little too high. Yeah, there you go. So this is adding noise over the image. This is too much, I would say two. It's gonna change every frame. Actually, I'll jack it up just so you can see a little bit. I'll make it even five. So every frame is gonna be a little bit different because everything has noise. But I think two is gonna be realistic in this case. On off let's take a look right here off on see it's very subtle it's a little bit of noise you're always going to add noise because everything has grain in real life nothing is perfectly noise free modern camera digital sensors are getting more and more sensitive and there's less noise but there's always some noise and if there's no noise it's going to look unrealistic that's a big big thing is adding noise so basically we added noise chromatic aberration lens distortion a vignette and then on the actual footage we added our depth of field and our real smart motion blur, which adds motion blur to the image. And that will help you achieve photorealism because those are all effects real cameras have and that 3D images don't have. So you definitely want to add those to have the most photorealistic result. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe. And if you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice and I'll see you around.